Welcome to the Walker Lecture Series. We have been at this for 124 years, and we have been able to do this, provide free entertainment and information because of the generosity of the Timothy and Abigail Walker family. Tonight's Walker Lecture has special significance for me. 40 years ago, I attended my first Walker Lecture, and the speaker was the amazing Kreskin. And I was amazed. I was amazed by his psychic powers and by his mind reading. As I got a little bit older, I read more about psychic phenomena and critical thinking and the scientific method. I read books by James Randi and by Penn Gillette and by this guy, Mark Edward, whose book is called Psychic Blues. As the years continued to go, go by, I was amazed at how easily I had been fooled. But it's still fun to be fooled. That's why we go visit magicians. Now, 40 years later, I am a trustee for the Walker Lecture Series, where I am honored to serve with Alwyn Fine, Dale Harrington, Paula Demers, and Joanne Martin. I am pleased to introduce tonight another amazing mind reader who understands how I was fooled. Mark Edward is a professional mentalist who specializes in magic of the mind. He has spent more than 35 years in hundreds of private party and corporate events. He travels internationally as a skeptical activist, using his skills as a mentalist to teach and promote critical thinking. Please welcome Mark Edward. Hello, how are you all? I'm glad you all made it. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Walker representatives for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to speak to a group that uh, wants to listen to uh, my version of the truth. Uh, it, you know, I, I am uh, somebody who has played uh, the psychic field for a while. That, that's what my book is about uh, for nine years. Uh, I did that the whole time as a skeptic, <clears throat> and I was actually on uh, the editorial board of Skeptic Magazine the whole time because uh, I've never been a believer, but I'm very interested in the subterfuge and the methods that were used by psychics as they came through this era of uh, the Hollywood scene and then it became the new age scene. And right about the tail end of the new age scene, uh, Uri Geller came along. And of course, as a magician, I was fascinated by what he was doing. You know, silverware will never be the same since he came along. So it was a definite sea change for me. And I, I saw how people took to it. <clears throat> you know, you could do a really nice four ace trick and uh, people would politely nod but uh, you bend a spoon or a knife or a fork or tell somebody, you know, their serial number of their uh, uh, social security card and it becomes a whole different experience. So I was drawn to that because I, being in Hollywood, I, I needed to find a high end way to make money. And fortunately or unfortunately, mentalists make about three times as much as magicians do because magicians do kid shows and, you know, I'm not putting them down, but they don't have that adult draw. They don't, uh, they don't have that, this person, I hear he can tell the future, that kind of thing. So that's how I initially got into this. My grandfather was a magician. Uh, when I, when he used to babysit me, he would practice his, his little tricks on me and some of them I still have, you know, and I'm sure you've seen those, those uh, wire puzzles, you know, he got me to think. And uh, that was really important to me because other people weren't thinking about those things. So I was a skeptic before I even knew it. But as I got into the 70s, uh, late, uh, late 70s, uh, some of these characters started to surface who were I could see right through them for the most part, but I was fascinated by it. And that's when I met Randy, who, uh, by the way, we miss him dearly. 
he wrote the introduction to my book and uh, we became dear friends. I used to see him all the time, at least once or twice a year. Uh, I'll show you some of the photographs a little bit later, but uh, the bond there was that we were both magicians and we both knew better. And he was extremely honest with me and everybody else. He didn't, he didn't pull any punches. So uh, now I started, I was doing seances for a while at the Magic Castle in Hollywood. And that really knocked me out because you could do the simplest magic trick and, 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 and give the credit for it to the spirit world and people would believe it. And even though it says the magic castle on the front of the building, you know, people come up afterwards and they'd be like, can you help me find, talk to my daughter or my, my sister? Or, yeah. And I, and it was really tough because in order to stay in character, you really don't want to say, ah, it's a bunch of baloney. But so I had to walk this tightrope where I, I had to be honest with my audience. So I started moving skepticism very subtly into the seance room. Uh, you know, I wouldn't just stop and say, you don't really think I can talk to dead people. But that was the, that was the undercurrent at the time. So I stopped doing that because it just became such a nightmare. And it's, it's in the book. It's in Psychic Blues. Uh, and I tried, I tried to use humor because one of the things I've realized is if you're going to talk about talking to the dead, uh, it's not funny. It is a very serious situation with people. But if you add a little humor in, you can add an edge of, of uh, I won't say sarcasm, but just kind of let people know, you know, are you really paying attention to what I'm doing? And that's what I've been doing ever since. Uh, I've been traveling a lot uh, around the world, which has been really great up until the pandemic. Uh, Susan and I, my partner, have been all over the place and teaching this idea that, you know, what is more likely? Now, think about it, ladies and gentlemen. What is more likely that this person, me, can talk to people who are dead and buried on the other side, or am I just a very clever manipulator? And that's really the, that's where the line is. And that's where it's been for about the past seven or eight years is getting people to consider that because it's really, really easy to fool people into believing that there is a spirit in the room. And sometimes I've even believed that there's a spirit in the room. But since I had a magic background, I said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, that's what it was. It was that squeaking door or that piece of paneling in the floor that made that sound. So it's been really a fascinating journey. Uh, like I say, I, I was never a believer, but I wanted to believe, especially during that transition when Geller came along, because scientists did not know what was going on with him. And he took full advantage of that. So like Kreskin, who I've always liked, uh, he, he took advantage of what people were believing and where they put their money and he would go after it and, uh, uh, and, and make it work on all the big TV shows. And I was right there watching him. So I really appreciated what he was doing. But on the other hand, he was telling people he was real and that gets into a whole other area, you know, and Geller will never reveal that he's just a magician like everybody else. But that is the charisma that it takes to, uh, to pull this stuff off. And now it's a huge multi-million dollar business. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, The Amazing Buck Howard. Nobody's seen. You should see The Amazing Buck Howard because it's, it's, a, it's a movie that is based on Kreskin's life. And it has a John, what's his name? Oh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, I'd heard about it for years. I didn't see it till just recently, but uh, make yourself a note and watch it on Hulu or something because it really tells an interesting story that most people don't know about Kreskin. And I won't go into it because it has a somewhat, I don't know, the ending is, is not what I expected, but I still like it. 
So when I was doing seance in the seance room, <clears throat> I became privy to a lot of uh, psychic entertainers. That's what it was called. And I learned about cold and hot readings. So I'm going to take it for granted that you don't know what either of those things are because that's the underpinnings of what is going on. <clears throat> cold readings are when a performer steps up in front of an audience and starts, pick a person in the audience and starts telling them all these things about them. And generally then switches into what their future is going to be. They sit down, he goes to the next person. And it's been around for, oh, several thousand years. It's a method that you learn. Then there's hot reading. Hot reading is where you get information on specific individuals. And when you have that information, you can totally blow their minds. And this is a, 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 much, a much cherished secret among psychics today. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why it's so dangerous today. So we call the people who are using hot readings. In other words, if you went to see Joe, big psychic guy, and he sold you <clears throat> Excuse me. He sold you a ticket to his show. It's likely <clears throat> that you would have to pay for it using your credit card. Once you give a person like that your credit card, <clears throat> your goose is cooked. Because I can look you up on any, any number of social media platforms, including obituary searches and other places. Make some notes about you and then look, look you up, say on Facebook, so I have a picture of you. And when you come into the audience, I know what seat you're sitting in. So if I know what seat you're sitting in and I know the name of your second grade teacher and I'm able to make it look like, oh, I'm picking up Mrs. Craig. She says, you know, you shouldn't eat crayons or whatever it is. It's pretty compelling stuff. And there's a hundred other different ways that uh, psychics get information. They will have plants in the audience. Don't, don't doubt that that happens because we have seen it. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little about those later. So, so we call these people grief vampires because what they are doing is they are, they're throwing a net over the most vulnerable people that are out in society. Uh, they're older, they've lost children, they've uh, lost, some have lost fortunes, not only before they meet the psychic, but after they meet the psychic. So we call them grief vampires because that's how they're making their living. And they do it 24 seven, day after day, week after week, month after month, and no one stops them. <clears throat> At this point, I'm gonna just divert for a second and remind everybody if you're writing things down that uh, I worked with Penn and Teller on a show called Bullshit. Uh, I did the first pilot episode of that. If you haven't seen it, they're great shows. Uh, I just finished doing an episode with the producer, uh, same producer of Bullshit. I won't mention his name, but a uh, fantastic person. He gets it. And uh, next week on Wednesday night, uh, it's 10 ABC. You have to look at your listings, 10 and 9 uh, Central. Uh, there's a show on, it's called The Con. You should see if I can show you the picture. Okay, Susan, here we go. I go down to sh share screen. <laughs> Hold on. Uh-oh. Hit share screen. Host disabled. No, hit share screen. I did. No, Hold on. No, it's been disabled for some reason. Oh, they've got it disabled. Anyway, it's... And it. It's yeah, because I have a whole bunch of pictures I was going to show too. So whoever disabled the share screen, I have a a, a, a bunch of pictures. They're not really necessary. Okay, so go ahead. Try it again. Try it again. Let's see. 
Yeah, here we go. Um, screen two, share. No, it says my personal meeting. Share it to the right screen, then. Unshare. We can see your screen. <clears throat> Yeah, but you can't see the picture that I want. You come over here, Susan. This is where I need you. I'm not a techie, okay? <laughs> I, I work with people's minds, not... Uh, what did I do now? You shared the wrong screen. Hello, everybody. Okay, so you go to share screen. Yeah. And you pick the screen you want to okay. share. All right. Well, leave that. Put that up for now. We have three three monitors here, so it's, so they can see that. Okay. So you can all see my book cover now, right? Yeah. Okay. I am going to just show this logo to implant this. I'm going to I'm going to implant this in your mind. The con, because it's a show I'm very proud of, and I've heard from the producer that even though I haven't seen it, I'm going to be really happy with what they did. Uh, we covered a story about a woman who lost $180,000 to a psychic. All right, now now I go unshare. Right? No, no, you go to the next picture. No, I don't want to do all the pictures now. Uh, so, yeah, the, here I am uh, filming that. Uh, awesome. and, and then there's the, the good old days, okay? So we'll come back to the pictures if we have time later. All right, how do I exit here? And screen share. Stop screen share. Stop share. Okay, there we go. So I wanted to point that out because everything I'm going to say tonight is, is going to be fleshed out quite a bit on that show. But I hope. But I also want to tell you about some of the latest trends uh, in psychic work because I'm sure you've all had your palms read or, or you've had your. Uh, you can hear me all right. Yeah, okay. You've had your palms read, you've had your uh, tea leaves read or tarot cards. So now, I guess I should back up for a minute. Mentalists, well, one of the things I discovered is that they are using the methods of mentalists. They use trickery if they have to, they will use trickery to convince you that they have a special power. And it's not that difficult, you know. Now, again, in my experience, and I'm going to say this, I always preface my lectures by saying, in my experience, about 95% of the people out there who call themselves psychic are absolute frauds, and they know it, and they're taking your money, and they're playing a huge game on you. Now that other five five percent, I split it in half. I split 2.5% are mentally ill. Okay, you know, schizophrenics hear voices too, but that doesn't mean they're prophets. So there's a lot of mental illness involved with this. Uh, so that's somebody to be aware of. The other 2.5% are charming, compassionate, helpful people who really do want to help, right? That's what my book is called, Psychic Blues. That's why it's the blues, because there are people out there who have very highly developed intuition. And if they share that with you without taking your money or ripping you off, <coughs> excuse me, I don't have a problem with that. But when you balance 2.5 against 78.5, or wait, 98.5, it's, it's a tough bet. It's, it's really not worth it. So I just want to get that out of the way. So we have a group called Guerrilla Skepticism. And this is something we picked up, uh, I picked up because I was hearing psychics use the term guerrilla skepticism. They were afraid of people who were coming after them. So we, we, we uh, pitched our tent with uh, Randy and some of the brilliant people that he works with or worked with. 
and we started doing undercover approaches. And the undercover approaches means that we pretended to be a normal sitter who would go to one of these gatherings. But in fact, we set up a sting, which is like a sort of a street magic uh, act. It's a uh, mission impossible. We set up all sorts of different ways so that the uh, psychic could be caught up in there, you know, with red handed. Uh, it was, uh, it's been a lot of fun. And that's why we've been able to travel a lot because it's fun to see these guys with egg on their face. So the biggest one we did was uh, for, well, we did a lot of them, but we finally, we, we, we didn't wanna just do them and preach to the choir of skeptics. So <clears throat> we found a reporter for the New York Times who liked our story. And he told us, if you find a way to catch somebody or you catch them, then I wanna write this story. And that's exactly what happened. So should I mention the name? Yeah, you can mention his name. So we just stumbled upon this guy named Thomas John, who was just starting to hit it big in the psychic business here in LA and in New York. Uh, I won't go into his track record, but we realized that he was taking information off of Facebook, as I mentioned, and then turning it around for specific individuals in the audience. And making it seem like he was getting it from some higher power, which on the face of it, on the face of it, was brilliant. And I, when I first saw him, I was like, oh, "Whoa, this guy, this guy is red hot." But the problem is, he was too perfect. You know, his his readings were like, "There's no way in the world somebody can be that right." There just isn't because they'd be the most dangerous person on the planet, you know, if they could consistently get hits like that. That's what it's called when you get a you get something right. It's a hit. And maybe your average psychic gets three or four hits uh, in a show. That's enough to do it, even if they're just guessing and doing cold reading. But if you get specific names like what your dog's name was and your brother quit smoking. And I mean, he just layers it on. And he does that because he has Facebook and he knows how to mine that so that he can make very predictable outcomes for himself. That's not even the worst of it. Okay. That's what, that's what was going on about two years ago. And we caught on to it and we were like, you know, this is bull crap. We got to do something to stop this guy because it hurts people. You know, if you're thinking out there, what's the harm? <sighs> we have seen the harm. Uh, Susan and I and everybody else we worked with, we have seen people's lives totally destroyed. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's just, it's absolutely despicable when you see somebody who, uh, like Sylvia Brown, I'm, ho I'm hoping some of you remember her. Sylvia would tell parents that their, their missing child was uh, murdered and dead and that they're not coming back. And then the next day they'd be found a block from the house. Or she'd say somebody was alive and being held as a sex slave in Japan. She actually did this to the girl's grandmother, but she wasn't, she wasn't alive. So when you see this over and over and you experience these people having no concern whatsoever. Once you leave the show, they don't care unless they can get a hook in you because that's what these shows are for. The shows are set up so that they get one or two hits or they, they make somebody break down into tears, which is, I hate to say it, really easy to do. When I was in uh, Oslo, I did a TV show where they, and they didn't give me any information I was just using cold reading and I had a, a woman in tears. So, but to me, that's not entertainment. That's not, that's not something people should like to watch. So when people say, oh, he's helping that person. No, he's opening up a space to get the hook in because after the show is over, 
you will approach that person and say, you need to come to me for a private reading. And then you're on the trail that leads to uh, the worst part of this, this con. So we were doing undercover appearances and approaches um, face to face to confront the psychics. And I have a, a lot of photos. I'll try and show some more in a minute. You know, we went after John Edward, like I said, Sylvia Brown, who was a convicted felon, okay? Thomas John is a, is a convicted criminal too. But people seem to look past that because he decided to become a spiritual entity or whatever he calls himself. So we figured that out by watching him and taking apart. See, most people will watch these shows or listen to them, but we record them. Then we go back and we, we look at what the person said based on what we did is we made fake Facebook pages and we put up phony information for, for people to, uh, that don't even exist. And then we put other fake information about myself and Susan and made, made up uh, different characters for both of us because we had to double blind it. We had to make it so that he couldn't say, and I've heard psychics say it, they say, oh, maybe I was just reading their mind. That's how I got that. No, when you double blind it and we don't know but the information is on Facebook on pages that we don't know about and they start reciting it, they can't get out of it. So even though this guy has, has been caught by us a couple times, he still has TV shows. He had a show called Seatbelt Psychic. <coughs> Anybody <clears throat> unfortunate enough to have seen that? Where he, he drives around like he's an Uber driver. And when the person gets in the car, he starts giving them a psychic reading. It's like, really? <laughs> and they're all paid actors because you don't just get in a car with somebody. You have to sign paperwork when you're on a show like that. But people don't think. So here's the, here's the bottom line I want to get to. What time have I got here? Here's the important thing to remember. <clears throat> So that's enough for me and Susan to keep busy. And we go around and we find these people and we expose them. But people want to believe, just like they want to believe in magic. There's nothing we can do about it. But if I can save somebody's $180,000 or they can spend it on something else, or we can have them say that aha moment where they go, aha, and we get letters from people who have gone to see these guys and then they look at our videos and they say, that's exactly what he did to me. So I'm, thank you, bless you. You know, it used to be, they'd go to the psych and they'd say, bless you for your God, godliness and this and that. Now they're coming to us and they're saying, bless you for what you're doing because you're helping us understand how this scam or these scams work. So it's not not really entertainment. It's a, it's a huge, multi-billion dollar scam. And it just lays low underground because these people are bottom feeders. And they know that if they cross the line, uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna be in big trouble. So now what's happened, get this, listen carefully to this now. Normally, a psychic like Thomas John or John Edward would have to sell tickets to a, uh, a venue. And these venues are incredibly expensive in Vegas and other places like that. So what happened is when the, then the pandemic came along and the pandemic says, we're not going to have any of that. And then Zoom came along. And Zoom has actually made it a lot easier for psychics to work. And I could tell you stories about when I not only saw this coming, but Bain Capital, I don't know if you remember Bain Capital back in the day, they approached me to get involved. They said, We're, we have some clients who want to build a, a, a new psychic platform. Would you like to be a part of it? And when they explained it to me, I said, no, I don't want to have anything to do with that. So what that platform is, is what you're partially what you're looking at right now. So what the psychic does now 
is he sells or she sells, she sells you a ticket to go to a Zoom psychic reading. So imagine if this was a psychic reading right now. So right now, I you can't really see it, but I'm sitting in front of three screens, okay? So you notice how you can see everybody's name in the lower left-hand corner there? So let's say that Bill Hyatt, is that what it is, Bill? Hat. Hat. Well, I can't see. Hat. Hey, Paul. Hat. Just Hat. like the top of your head. Okay. So Bill Hat has a problem. He's 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 bereaved. <clears throat> and he wants to talk to me because I'm the medium. So all I do is I go over to my other screen over here. While I'm talking to the person before him, it's called the one ahead system in mentalism. And I look him up. And I get a few pictures. I, I I can search the obituary columns. I can search. You you name it. Any social media that that I have uh, access to, and a lot of the uh, professional psychics have access to very expensive search engines. So quite literally, I could tell Bill, you know, what what the first car he had, what color it was, you know. It's all there, all your information with Facebook, we gladly share, some of us don't, all of our information on the internet. So it's all stored and it's just a matter of paying for it to get the gem or the nugget that you need. And if you look at some of our videos, uh, which are at abouttime.org. I'll put it in the chat too. She's gonna, Susan's gonna put it in the chat. Abouttime.org is a lot of the stuff we did because we did a tour and it was called the about time tour because we were fed up and we said, look, we got to go out and show some of this to people. They won't believe it. They just won't believe it. And they do, they see it and they go, huh, what was I thinking? <coughs> so Zoom has now made online psychics triple their money that they made when they were going to these arenas and standing up and doing this. So it's convenient. It's really easy for them and they can do it in real time. I can be, we've caught mediums like looking over to the other screen like this. So you just bought a new pair of shoes, didn't you? <laughs> you know, it's that blatant, but people just don't know, okay? Uh, in, in America, it's illegal in, in Europe, excuse me, and in England, it is illegal to search somebody's financial records. But in America, if it's a business transaction, which this is, I can search your, your uh, financial records, which makes it even better because the, the, the psychic can say, this person's loaded. I'm going to really get some hooks in them. So zoom is not your friend and i'm afraid that we can't we can't put the genie back in the bottle but if i make you aware of it and you have a friend that's like i'm going to a psychic reading on zoom tonight watch it just watch it okay so now i'm going to so op, uh, the one that we did that was in the New York Times, and I, I'd like to get everybody to try and read that if you can find it. Put is, it in the chat too. Oh, she put it in the chat. It's, it was called Operation Pizza Roll. And all the operations that we do, yeah, you can look it up on Operation Pizza Roll. All these operations have food names for them as a code uh, because we don't want to, because it's silly and it's fun, you know? I mean, we're working on one called Operation Lima Bean right now, which is going to be the killer of all stings, but we can't talk about it yet. And if you would like to see the breakdown of how all this happened, uh, put together by a really clever and talented guy, you can go to Holy Kool Aid. Holy Kool Aid is on uh, YouTube. And the title of the video is, what is it? Psychic Revealed? Something like that. Maybe yeah, you'll, you'll see our, our faces on it. And it, it breaks down the whole operation. And uh, 
Hopefully you'll laugh out loud if you don't cry. So I covered the con, that's next week. I kind of rushed through some things. Um, that's on ABC. So now I'm gonna show you some pictures and I'm gonna talk over them. Can I do that? Yeah, go ahead and show the screen share. Wait, I, okay, hold on. So I go to screen share now. <laughs> and now I go to- The third screen. The third- the This one. one. Yeah, there you go. Hit start. So okay, this. so I hope you can see this yeah, is can. this is my uh, some some of my uh, oh I got gotcha. you okay all right so this is a you know I've done many many years of magic and I love sideshow stuff and phony mediums and because that's the only kind there are folks <laughs> I hate to tell you and the phonier the better as far as I'm concerned. And there I am doing uh, some practical alchemy on the stage. Um, now here I am in my psychic booth, which again, like I said, in order to get this information, I had to do this kind of work because psychics are not like magicians. You cannot go up to a psychic and say, hey, show me how you did that with the, uh, with the person's uh, uh, car that they own. They're not going to tell you because that's their power over you and everybody else. But if you start ingratiating yourself and you play the game or you infiltrate, which is what I did, you can see I'm having a lovely conversation with this woman. And you can see she has her hand up to her neck. That's body language, which tells me she's not too comfortable talking to me. She's protecting herself. But I don't really care because I'm... I'm just doing this because I'm having a good time. So if I learn something, all the better. So here I am deep into a reading with a couple teenage girls. And what can I say? You don't have to tell them very much at all. You just have to, you know, I prided myself when I did this, that you don't have to ask a question. I'll just answer it with the cards. And then I let the cards lead my way. And as I look at their reactions, their facial expressions, their body language, uh, all these, they're called tells, gamblers know all about them. And if you're aware of them, you can tell what direction is the right direction. So you're, you're constantly course correcting. So this is pretty much street, street readings, okay? And street readings are necessary if you're gonna learn how to do this, you can't, I've had magicians come up to me and they say, I want you to tell me how to do that psychic stuff. I'm like, well, how many years do you have? You, you don't, there's no one, there's a, not an instruction sheet that makes stop it. Stop sharing because it's not sharing anymore. Uh-oh. Hit stop share. Hold on, stop shares has to be hit for a second. Where is it? At the top of the screen. What happened? I don't know. Okay, now hit share again. Did you guys see the last slide? No. Wait, they're shaking. I think their I head. did. The two teenage girls? Yeah. And, oh. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's go back. Thank you. Um, okay. So, yeah, there's the two girls, and, you know, they're innocent. They're young. They can be manipulated very easy and then they go and tell their mom how accurate I was and the rest is history. Here's a little protest we did when we went through that whole rapture thing. I don't know if you remember that or not but uh, Harold, Camping. Harold Camping said the world was going to end and you know so we got out in the street on Hollywood Boulevard and uh, we, we had great signs and they put clothes out on the sidewalk so that it looked like people just vaporized on the street. <laughs> it, was, it was quite interesting because people were like, you know, we found out that, you know, not too many people really believe that. Here's a lecture for CFI that I did. Uh, 
Center for Inquiry, they run Skeptical Inquirer magazine, which I highly recommend. Uh, Susan and I were on their independent investigations group where we actually tested uh, individuals for their so-called psychic powers. And after, I don't know, about six years or something, not a single one came up with anything. They all failed. And there was a $100,000 prize for that, by the way. And we had a $5,000 finder's fee. If you had somebody who would, was reticent about coming to talk to us, we offered you $5,000 that you would get if you can bring somebody to us. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, this was serious business. We were not messing around. And one of the reasons I'm not doing that anymore is because most of these people we tested were mentally or severely mentally ill. And I just didn't want to play that game anymore because something would have happened if there was anybody who, uh, not to mention Randy's million dollar challenge, which was going on at the same time. So yeah, there I am with, with the good man myself. We're having a serious discussion about ethics, I think at this point. Uh, this was at Dragon Con where I gave a, a lecture that uh, was very well received. And uh, there's plenty of stories from there. They're in my books. Uh, a lot of the stories are not in Psychic Blues, but in, in other things that go to my website. <clears throat> but Randy and I have been friends for a long, long time. We're friends for a long, long time. And he he understood me. Where, where a lot of the other skeptics, when I was playing both sides of the fence, really didn't like me. And a lot of them still do not like me. And uh, and a lot of magicians didn't like me either because I was stepping on their toes. But Randy got it because Randy had been there and he, he knew the best way to go about setting these things up. Okay, so there's another shot of Psycon. There I am giving somebody a reading. There's a quick, quick shot of the seance. There's a seance I did in Edinburgh, one of my favorite cities in the world. Uh, we did a, a series of them there. There is the Australian Skeptics Conference. Now see, that's, that's a big, big group to talk to, which I really, that's what I wanna do is get to the biggest group possible. And there's a quick one. There's another seance in Edinburgh. Here I am answering questions in the audience. All of the people in this sequence were hot red. So I knew exactly who they were and what they were doing. And I had to make it look difficult. So that's what I'm doing there. That is the European Skeptics no, Conference. Oh, I'm sorry, New Zealand Skeptics Conference, which was a blast. Christchurch. Christ uh, there I am doing a seance in Australia. Australia. And this is finally the European uh, skeptics Poland. in Poland. So that is the end of that section. Let's just zip out of there real quick. Um, and go back to the screen. So if I've left anything out, I guess now would be a good time to ask some questions. Oh, wait, wait, let, let me... What happened? Something's showing the front of somebody's house. What is this? You're fine. You're, you're fine. Okay. So, but I, you know, while I was showing you those pictures, I did get an impression from somebody out in the audience or out somewhere. I don't even know if they're on the screen or not. Yes, they are. Uh, It seems to have something to do with somebody, somebody who was in the army, somebody who was involved with uh, military resources and planning in some way. Uh, went to a place called Bonnie Eagle High School. <laughs> Is that ringing a bell anywhere? <laughs> No? Yeah, she's already got it. She's smiling. She's laughing. And uh, that's me. <laughs> who is that? Oh, the lady right there? 
<laughs> so and I'm also getting this impression. Are you uh, are you getting ready to do some traveling after after the pandemic? Yeah, definitely. Up? It's like who isn't? Okay, these are the kind of, <laughs> these are the kind of things that you can you can weave into a reading. So anyway, that's how it's done. Okay, and that's. That's not good, okay? It is not good to use people's information that way because a lot of people are not savvy to the techniques. And, uh, you know, it's gone to a whole new level and Susan and I are fighting for your, what would you call it, Susan? Not freedom, we're fighting for your, uh, your privacy. It's a privacy situation. So <clears throat> I don't mind entertainment, you know? If you're at a Halloween party uh, or a hayride or something, and there's some, some grizzled old woman and she, she's reading people's palms, who cares? You know, she's still dangerous, but <laughs> you know, it's not, she's not going to try and get you into a situation that you can't get out of financially. It would be hard to believe if she did. I've seen a few that are pretty good, but if it's entertainment, that's why my book is called Psychic Blues. I'm fascinated by it. Because, of course, an older woman, you know, you see a gypsy woman and she's got a gold earring and the babushka on her head and you sit down and suddenly she knows all this stuff about you. Well, she's 83 years old. That's all she's done her whole life. That's what her mother did. That's what her grandmother did. It shouldn't be any surprise that she can nail you in, in a couple of minutes. So... When people say, I can't believe that gypsy woman, she was dead on. Well, what else is new? That's all she does. So people forget that too, you know? They think she goes home and becomes a, I don't know, a stockbroker or something, not likely. So questions, I'm open for questions I have about. Don't ask, don't tell me how much time. A couple of minutes. No, you don't have a question. Yes, I do. Anybody? Well, I guess not. Wait, I have a question. Okay. Are, are faith healers in the same uh, category as these these psychic people? Yeah, I, I'd say some. In most cases, they're even lower. Yeah. If you re if you read James Randi's book, The Faith Healers, you'll find out how he he busted them i i don't have time to really go into it yeah they're they're some of the lowest of the low because they're taking advantage of people as well right so they can get a new airplane and i mean it's, it's, <laughs> so who else how do they convince a speaking to a deceased person who who am i talking to me gloria campbell oh, she's you can't see on the screen. Anymore. Oh, I can't. Uh, did anybody say they were speaking to a deceased person? Oh, absolutely. Right. But what I'm saying is, uh, you're asking me how they do it? Right. How do they convince them that they're actually speaking to them? Well, I just explained that. If I do, if, if I do research on you and your family, but I don't tell you that I've looked up your aunt and your sister and your, your dog you used to have and all that. And then when you sit down in front of me, I start reeling off things that supposedly there's no way in the world the psychic could know that. You're going to believe pretty fast. So Susan and I hear this all the time, all over the world. They say, that may be true about that psychic, but this person, there's no way in the world they could have known that. And we're here to say, yes, there is. And that's how they get started. And it's, wow. it's easier than you think. It really is. If I have your name, you're cooked. So you, you don't give people your name, you know, and it's hard to do when you're using a credit card. But I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, if you, if you, if you had beliefs, again, this is my opinion based on my experience, it would be a lot easier if we could talk to dead people, but it would also be scarier than shit too. I mean, what do you think it'd be like to go around and hear people's thoughts, dead people's thoughts all the time? 
There's a bunch of questions for you there. The okay, chat. go ahead. Do you want me to read them? No, let's, let's see if somebody goes to them. Do you want me? I, I can read off the questions on the chat. My girlfriend's got them here. Okay, before that, can you hear me, sir? Yes. This is Roy. Hi, Roy. Uh, when you were talking about the Colonel, Miss, Miss Payne, or so forth, Miss I, who? I, I did a quick oh. uh, Facebook check on her, even though she's not on my Facebook or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. You know, I could see where you came up, you know, thinking she was in the military. Yeah. And all, I, all the information's right there. It's yeah. really scary. Yes, it is. Because, <laughs> because like I said, we, we want to share our information. So we're, we're stuck, you know, we, I mean, I don't know what the middle ground is, but yeah, I mean, and if I scroll back on, on her Facebook page, I can go back and there'll be things that she even forgot about posting. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's an art, but I don't, I don't think it's uh, particularly a good art. Yeah. It's easy to find it, it is scary. I, I just yeah. want to say that. And thank you very much for doing this tonight. Thank you for having me. I really, I'm appreciative. Next question. Next John's question. question I think. John's got a question. John? I, I actually wanted to hear a little bit about the answer to Carol's question. She put a question in the chat. How did they find all this out before social media? And I suspect it's connected to my question, follow up about tells. What, what do you look for when you're looking for the tell? Well, again, Kreskin knows about all this, but I'll re re refresh the memory. Um, the tells on a person are one thing, but there's other ways of getting information that mediums used to use. Uh, the tells on a person, which I used for many years, are, you know, their shoes. What are their shoes like? What's their jewelry like? What's their hairstyle like? How, how do they comport themselves? How do they, uh, you know, what's their hygiene level? What is, you know, you, you learn to recognize these things in, two seconds and you make a judgment. It's like, I don't like to use the word profiling, but guess what folks, that's what happens. So I usually could find out everything I needed to know about that person before they even sat down at the table with me. And then it's just a matter of playing it back in a manner so that they, they see that I see that about them. So if I see that, they will respect what I tell them about what I see in their future and all the other things. So back in the old days before, before the mediums, mediums don't have to work very hard anymore. In the old days, they had to send somebody to the next town and that person would go around and find out who, the, who was messing around with who and take notes. And they would even send, send a, a, a Confederate to a person's house and they knock on the door and famous story. And the person would open the door and the guy would say, is this where Mr. Jones live? And the guy says, no, there's no Mr. Jones here. But in that two or three seconds, he'd look into the living room and he was, maybe he would see a painting of a ship over the mantle. So then during the show, <laughs> Dunninger was the one who did this. Dunninger was say, why do I see a ship over your mantle? You know, I mean, that's work. You got to do some work when you're going to, when you're going to, try and impress people. But now it's so much easier. People fall for all sorts of, I could tell you stories, but we don't have time. So, so there's way, there, were, there were ways to mine information. And also psychics in the old days would share information. Like one would be coming to town and another would be leaving and they would share information. You're gonna go see Mrs. Shirley so-and-so. Oh, I got her right here. Here, take this. And there'd be, it was called a, it was called a, a ash room. the ash room, which is a takeoff on the ashram. And the mediums called it the ash room because a couple of times when the cops came, they had to burn it down because there was so much personal information. Files. Files, you know. So, so it's always been available if you look for it. Yes, Carol. Carol. I can't hear you, Carol. Hello. I'm sorry. I can unmute myself. I didn't know I could unmute myself. That's okay. Um, 
I'm in the midst of reading your book and it's just really wonderful. But what, what, what um, strikes me is that um, I'd like to know a little bit about when you turn, turned uh, over from the other side. Um, there's so much interesting the stuff, side. the other side. There's so much interesting stuff about when you were on the phone 24 hours a day, yeah, solving yeah, everybody's yeah. problems. And to me, you know, honestly, other than the five cents a minute or 75 cents a minute, it, it sounds like it might, three, yeah, it, it might've been fairly useful, but it something, was there uh, a, a great moment that caused you to just throw up your hands and say, this is disgusting? Or um, did you just, uh, you know, how did that no, I, You have to understand, and people misunderstand this. I was disgusted from the beginning. <laughs> oh. I, was a, I was a magician who knew this was all phony. But you can't learn about it or understand about human nature or the people, why they were calling, what they were asking. You can't find that out by asking the psychic on a 900 line. You have to get inside that grubby barrel and root around oh. in it. And then you start to learn these techniques. So I saved a couple of people's lives. You, you haven't gotten to that part yet in the book, but you will. Oh, so wow. yeah, there, there, were, there were some situations that came about because I told the truth. So I did not become a very popular psychic by just doing generalities. In fact, sometimes when I told people the truth, they'd call me back again. Like I would say, they'd say, give me some lotto numbers. And I'd say, look, if I could do that, I wouldn't be talking to you. And there'd be silence for a minute. And then they say, oh, yeah, huh, you know, and then that person would call back and they'd say, you were so honest with me about the lotto numbers. I figured I'd ask you about this, you see. <laughs> so so it was a very hard thing to uh, navigate for a while. But I learned about uh, people's problems. Somebody else has asked about the Long Island media. Yes, who's asking about the Long Island medium? I'm getting a... <laughs> <laughs> you see how this works? Somebody, the Long Island medium? Teresa Caputo. Teresa Caputo? Yeah. Is that you? No. 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 Just answer it. I don't know what the question is. What about it? What do you think I am, psychic? She is a piece of work, I'll tell you that. for <laughs> sure. I uh, did an inside edition where we went we went after uh, Teresa Caputo. If you don't know who she is, she's the one who has the high blonde hair and the fancy shoes. And she's very New York. And hey, you know what? I don't care about that. I, I don't care about them psychics. They don't know nothing. She's uh, basically a cold reader, but I, we caught her doing a hot read. She's she's mixes the two together. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what happened. We went to the went to the arena. I was with the reporter, he was sitting next to me. And the interesting thing with Teresa was they had this crew that had a microphone that would go to the people she was gonna talk to. And the crew, strangely enough, would go to the area of the audience where she was gonna go to next. Like they were the psychics. Why, why are these guys going and setting up the microphone right next to this lady when she's not done with the person she was just talking to? Oh. So, yeah, I caught on to that. And then the, the big moment was a woman says, uh, yeah, I know, I know <laughs> my, my girlfriend's <laughs> filling it all in. So uh, the woman stands up and, and uh, she, uh, Teresa says, why am I getting images of baby clothes? And the woman says, that's amazing. You know, I just put pictures of baby clothes up on Facebook. And I like jab the guy next to me did did you did that but nobody seems to notice that they're so wrapped up in their own world of grief or psychic or spirituality that they don't think well she just blew her own cover as a stooge so and that's really where i started to follow along with some of the, some of the methods that that are used and then when i did <clears throat> when I did my 900 infomercial, yeah, I got the bad news, and uh, it was it was it, it wasn't so much I turned a corner. I just had enough information now. I didn't I didn't need to hear any more. It was I was just sick of it. Okay, 
Okay, so what is shut eye, by the way? Shut eye is somebody who will basically it's it's used by psychics, and it's somebody who is a absolute believer in any new age kind of thing, any any <laughs> Bigfoot, UFOs. Uh, because you ESP. know how you find Brianna in the book when you met her. The yeah. Third, the third. Yeah. And I, I didn't understand. I defined her as a as a shut eye because I could tell by the way she was acting and talking that she was a, a died in the wool believer. Either that or she was a damn good actress. Oh. Which, excuse me, is still possible. Thank um, you. One of the other questions is last question time yet? No. Not quite. Shut what do you think about alternative medicine? Do you feel that that is that there's any benefit to some of this? Somebody wants to know about alternative medicine? Yeah, practitioners. Here's something I learned a long time ago. I don't take medical or legal questions. <laughs> Next question. Um, Very dangerous place to put yourself. What is an example of somebody it. who's one of that 2.5% highly intuitive person? The 2.5% highly intuitive person could be uh, a neighbor who somebody has gone to in a time when they were bereaved or upset and gotten some good counsel, but wasn't sold a candle and wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't, didn't have a hook put in her. You know, if somebody says, you got to come back and see me again next week. That's not part of that 2.5%. But there are people out there who have very enhanced intuitive abilities like i said about the little old lady and there's nothing wrong with listening to them because a lot of times they make sense but if they're whacked out walk the other way because they're 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 leading you down a path that's why i said 2.5 percent is not a lot it is it is shaving off a very small portion of uh the racket that is out there Another question is, what about the faint? There's a lot of famous ones. People are saying that their gifts are from near-death experiences. Well, near-death experiences. I can't, re I don't really get into that because. But they just say it because they got to say they got the power they, from somewhere. They'll say anything that they can get you to listen to. They don't care whether it, how, and the more outrageous it is, the better. I remember when Geller was first around, he was telling everybody he got his powers from a spaceship that is orbiting the earth, but it's invisible, you know? <laughs> and the magicians that I knew were like going, yeah, right. You know, so, but there are people that still, and if you've ever seen him work, he's fantastic. I mean, I, I would rather watch Geller work, although this is getting not to, not to be so true, but in the old days, I would rather watch him work than any other magician that, that was on stage calling himself a magician because he had such a charisma that, yeah, he could sell you that. He could say, what, you don't believe that I got my powers from space? Here, hold on to this spoon. You know? There's another person who says that she had, she went to a medium who couldn't have looked her up ahead of time because there was nothing there. And she said that she got all sorts of accurate things about her stepbrother and her stepfather and I'm sorry, but my assistant here is reading me. Uh, someone <laughs> has said that they, this is probably when I should stop because somebody was uh, very taken by a reading that they got from a medium. She was stunned because there was things said that they couldn't have been said. That well, we hear that all the time. Though. There, know, the, she was stunned because there were things that were said that there's no way that woman could have known. It wasn't on social media and it wasn't, it's, that's cold just, reading. that's, it, it could be cold reading. If you yes, understand how to do cold reading, you can turn a, a, a wrong answer into a yes answer. It's dodgy. And it's, it's, I don't like to call it a skill, but, and the thing about, you know, there's obituary pages, there's, there's things that we don't have any control of that are loaded with our information. Well, this is somebody who couldn't have been hot read. She was cold read. She was cold red. Yeah, yeah that's it, probably where it is. Unless she's for real, then I'd like to talk to her. I got $5,000 for <laughs> me and $100,000 for you. If you find somebody who can, it has to be repeatable. See, that's the thing. We get these people under test conditions and they're like, 
gee, it didn't happen. We're like, we just spent four weeks test getting this test ready. What do you mean it doesn't work? So let's just say I'm skeptical. If Thomas John was on the stage with his eyes closed, then where was he getting the information for the fake Facebook page? But don't say where. what is most likely. Uh, again, what is uh, Thomas John, if he's getting things, closing his eyes? <laughs> where, where do you think he's getting information? <laughs> can I even say that? You, you can say That's a microphone. Ins insinuate where you think it might well, be. Well, you know, in the old days, again, with Peter Popoff and Randy, uh, Popoff was getting his information from uh, a little tiny ear ear thing, earpiece yeah. in his ear. Just like I did. And that's that what cracks me up because sometimes when we watch Thomas John videos, he will he will act as if he's listening to spirit. He'll go, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. And then he'll close his eyes and you're like, he's listening to someone feed him information, but he's maybe trying to, possibly. maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm sorry, I don't know, <laughs> we, we don't know for sure. But the point is, why that's in radio you don't do that you don't stop for, and have dead space like that and then he'll even say oh yes i hear what you're saying and 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 it's like God. just like you could have an assistant off you could have an assistant off stage who's reading you information just like we, I just did, we did it on the jeff probst show and i turned i turned jeff probst into a medium for the show that's how did, we did it i just did it a couple minutes ago with this other woman so are you stunned? Are you happy? Are you disappointed? Somebody said, thank God for people like you. There's a lot of work to be done. And, and I think we've kind of turned a, a historical corner here since this, this election happened where, you know, people are just tired of being lied to. That's the bottom line. So, uh, you know, if, you, if all of this stuff has an interest to you, get involved in a skeptics group. There's, they're local, they're all over the place and they, they meet and they get together and they talk about this stuff and have a few laughs and they learn something. And then they get too big and they break off in another one. And this is how it's going to happen. Oh, somebody wants to know if politicians cold read us. Politicians have specialists who cold read for the politicians. <laughs> they don't have time to do it. But yeah, I, in fact, my contention is that the last two elections uh, before, right towards the end of the Psychic Friends Network. Again, it sounds like a conspiracy theory, so I don't like to, you know. They learned a lot from the Psychic Friends Network, and they learned a lot from the information that was gathered about people from 900 lines and all this stuff, and they learned how to use that in whatever it is they do because I've never trusted politicians anyway, but I've seen, I've seen examples of some of the things I've learned from the psychic world applied to politics. So, but it's all, that's a whole other game. That's, that's too big for me. What have you learned about humanity that we might not appreciate or realize? What have I learned about humanity? That's a good place to end. Um, people just want someone to talk to. That's all they want. They want to be heard. They, yeah, they want to be listened to. I mean, that's the first thing I learned when I really dug into this is that you have to learn to listen, listen, listen. And you don't get on this pompous high horse and start making all these claims. You just listen. And then you use your rational mind to play that back to the person in a compassionate way. So they think that you're reading, reading their heart and their mind, but really you're just translating. So therapists do, okay? So we've lost the ability to just talk to each other. You know, if I went into the supermarket and I was in the checkout line and I just turned to somebody and started telling them all sorts of psychic things, the person would say, get away from me, security, get this person away from me. But if I have a little table and a little velvet pillow and a sign behind me that says, you know, psychic advisor, people will line up for two to three hours just for five or six minutes with me. Wow. wow. Yeah. So why? Because I'm supposed to have the answer to everything. And since we're all more alike than we are different, I can make some 
general summations about, you know, if I look down in the guy's shoes, he has two different shoes on. I mean, <laughs> that's a pretty extreme, extreme, an extreme option there, but uh, but everybody's got everybody's got something good they want to give, and that's that's what you you have to try and wrap your arms around that without touching them, you know. And and if you can uh, get them to leave the table smiling, then then my work is done, you know, because I don't do any I don't tell people bad things. I mean, I've had people where I sit down and they go. You're not going to tell me anything bad, are you? And I'm like, why would I do that? <laughs> and then they relate a story about somebody, some gypsy witch was on the block in Halloween and told them something terrible and it happened. You know, it's like, no, I want you to be comfortable. I want to entertain you. I don't want you to be put off by me and, you know, think I'm going to tell you when you're going to die. You know, people have asked me, they go, when am I going to die? And I'm just like, <laughs> really? You stood in line for two hours to find out when you're going to die. I'd be like, I don't know. Here, take your money back. Go away. Somebody says they're going to wear two different shoes when they go out. So it's, it's a crazy mixed up world. And my job is to try and just straighten it out a little bit. Even if it's, uh, you know, I still, still love doing, re I love, most of all, I love doing palmistry. There is nothing that I enjoy more than cradling someone's hand in mine and getting really close in and just laying it on really thick. <laughs> <laughs> you have a packet of breath mints and a magnifying glass. And if you do it right, it's very entertaining. And there's even some scientific things about the hand that that are true, you know? So, and I share those things with people. I don't, I don't make it all mystical. I say, oh, well, you know, this, this area, this finger is is fat, it's fatter, that means you like to cook. 90% of the time that's true because that's where you hold a skillet, you know? Wow. So, I mean, but I don't say I got it from a book on supernatural <laughs> beings. I say, I read it in a, in, a, in a scientific book, see? Because science is more interesting than the supernatural. You know, all magic is science. And if you can get people to open up to that, then you're leading them in the right direction. And thank you so much, everybody, for coming. And yeah. thank you so much to our guest, Mark Edward. Let's draw. Oh, thank you, Mark. And let it let him hear awesome. our appreciation. That was fun. You know where to find me. I'm on the internet at Mark Edward. No, wait, the Mark Edward.com. www. The markedward.com and my book is available on uh, on Amazon and you'll see a lot of other books on my website too if you want to get into the dark side <laughs> thanks a lot guys thank you see you later thank you thank you John oh you're welcome thank thanks, you for John. thank you for coming tonight nice to see you John good evening